Welcome to the Gals Guide to the Galaxy podcast, where a group of gals gather for you one cool thing around our topic of the month. Is it ancient history? Is it breaking news? Is it safe for work? Well, that's up to each gal. All we know is that... Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. Welcome back. I'm Katie, and I'm joined by Bonnie, Leah, and Lisa talking about our one cool revolutionary gal. Bonnie already talked about Benzer Butto. Lisa talked about True Henny and Freddie, the Dutch assassins of Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> Nazis! <laughs> but before like we dive back, <laughs> Leah is going to tell us what's on the Gals Guide calendar for this week. That's right. For week three, the week of January 17th through the 23rd, we have game night on the yes. third Friday of every month. Woohoo! So for January 21st, we are going to play I Descent, which is a card game inspired by Ruth Bader. Ginsburg, aka Amazing. my cat's name. Uh, this <laughs> game gives you various arguments like is a hot dog a sandwich? Uh, no. This no. will kill Bonnie. Yeah. <laughs> Nope. <laughs> no, I just I'm not on either side, but it, it no, Bonnie's neutral. A lot of yeah. it hurts my a head. A lot of feelings right. from a lot of a, lo a lot of yeah. them. But it also has like our cats jerks is yeah. another one of the oh, examples. Absolutely. Okay, no, no. Like, I love cats and dogs, but cats no, are jerks. Cats are awesome. <laughs> See, already this is going yep. to be an awesome game. So the idea is you you have an argument, you pose your side of it, and you try to get as many people to vote on your side. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the I dissent uh, card game that we're going to be playing. So suggested ages are 14 and up. Uh, it is going to be tons of fun, and it is going to be this Friday at 7 p.m. The first round starts at 7.15, so don't okay. be late. I decided to do a, a late time for the game nights. It's a hot dog and sandwich! Oh my Stop god! It. Oh my god! It is Stop absolutely it. free to attend, so it's tons of fun. Check out also the calendar of events on galsguide.org for more awesome events like this one. Dun, 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 dun. Exactly. Beautiful. I give it Beautiful. back to you. <laughs> All right. Well, before I introduce to you my revolutionary lady, yes. I would like to know a little something about all of you. Sweet. I would like to know what is one way you have rebelled so far in your lifetime? Ooh, let me count the ways. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> like I maybe got one. Maybe. Right. There you go. Is it related to me in any way? No. Damn it. I'm not oh, so I'm not sorry. a good enough influence. No, that, I, I, I need to do more. <laughs> well, I've, I've been at Thanksgiving where my mom is like, how did I raise a feminist? <laughs> wow. Right? Did bravo, you say, mom, bravo. So... Did you say Mama Leah? Mama Leah. <laughs> <laughs> well, back in the day, yes. I was quite the rebel. I did not want to become the sweet housewife that my mother wanted me to become. Right. Although, to her credit, she did say you could be whatever you want to be. There you go. So. However, so I, what she really meant was, yeah. <laughs> so I had a, I was one of the charter subscribers to Ms. Magazine, nice. and um, also the Rolling Stone. <gasps> yes, I had a Rolling Stone subscription. I felt like a yeah. badass. My yes. mom thought for sure I was going to hell. Yeah, Rolling Stone <laughs> and Ms. Magazine. Yep, ticket mm, to hell. Exactly, <laughs> you guys. Exactly. <laughs> I like In it. little Montgomery County, Indiana. Oh, hell yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I'm trying to think of like one one way. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I know. Leaving Michigan, heading to California with all those crazy ideas. I know. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like, so I left at 18 to move to California. Yes. And then I started a film company and uh -huh. I tried to make films, uh, up, I didn't try, I made films about women, for women. Uh -huh. uh, but probably the damn rebellious thing, most rebellious thing I've really done is start a women's history library. Because... Don't uh, steal my answer! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Bonnie and I, and Katie and Lisa, have started a women's history library. <laughs> oh, no, I, 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 was just, I was just riding in on coattails on that one. <laughs> it is pretty damn rebellious, the idea of... Because, I mean, I do think that reading is rebellious. Um, it's how I got into the most amount of trouble, <laughs> is reading ideas. I mean, like, I wasn't allowed to be taught about Malcolm X in school. There was a sentence that said, Martin Luther King, and we talked about Martin Luther King, it said, also at the same time, there was a civil rights leader called Malcolm X. And I asked my teacher, when are we going to learn about him? And he said, we can't, you're not allowed to. 
Oh, oh, there's the red flag. So I went to the <laughs> library and learned about Malcolm X. And I'm like, who else aren't we allowed to learn about? So like, to me, reading was rebellious. And so mm. starting a library about reading about things that, the you know, act. it is to me, <laughs> it it's is. the ultimate rebellion. Let it kind of to everything else. So. Um, yeah, yeah, so now that I've stole Bonnie's. <laughs> <laughs> Bonnie, what's your most uh, rebellious act in your lifetime? Besides starting so a far. library. Yes, which is awesome. I don't know. I think becoming an artist was pretty rebellious. I think so, too. It is. like, don't do that. You're not going to make any money. You're right. Be starving artist. Starving Bonnie, artist. Bonnie, yeah. I was an art major in high school, and that was exactly what went into my head. And I See? said, no, I'm not going to become an artist. There you go. But Bonnie yeah. did, but Bonnie she's persevered. Amazing. Yes. But, like, specifically... I have no qualms about walking into a women's bathroom. Oh, I've there done you it go. multiple times. I always think it's There's dirty and gross. I, do too. I just don't want. I just feel no, gross. No, like I've done it like a gas station. Sometimes there you were gotta go. And female back. Yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah. there's a line. I'm like, I'm going. But it was I'll like a it. single. Yeah, it was. It was a single use bathroom. Yes, uh -huh. right, right. So I just locked the door, and when I came out, there was a dude, and I'm like, yeah, whatever. Yep, exactly. Like, the bathroom yeah yep. but now like i had to once at the stuts we were putting up uh little signs and they put them in the bathroom so mm -hmm. everyone would see them and they were like oh but who's gonna do it in the mail i'm like i can go in the mail bathroom right like, right exactly like, like for one no one was in there right like, for one, but i just knock on the door yeah anybody in here yes. no one was in there walk in do you think <laughs> yep. get out like right people with the bathrooms like yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We're all there to do the same thing. Yes. <laughs> like, yep. I have fine. no problem if A, it doesn't smell like a sewer, mm. and B, there's doors. That's all it, I need. Yeah. There's sometimes, it doesn't matter if it's a female bathroom or a men's bathroom or a gender neutral bathroom. I'll walk into that and be like, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> like, it smells a too bad. <laughs> there, there was a time my husband and I were traveling, and I had to go really bad, and the women's room was being cleaned. Right. And oh, they yeah. Were That's when you go into the They were single totally. use, yeah. and so I went into the There's men's room. There's a lock room, on the door, right? Yeah. And we were in a foreign country. I didn't speak the language. So I, as I'm washing my hands, somebody knocks on the door, and I'm thinking, oh, crap. Uno momento. I've been busted. <laughs> I have been busted. And I thought, how am I going to handle this? Okay. I am just going to open the door and act like stupid American. No, oh, act oh, like okay. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. No big deal. Right. And, you know, just ignore the person who's there. Right. So I open the door. It's my husband. <laughs> and he looks at me and goes, Can't you read? <laughs> <laughs> I do love it. <laughs> but it did remind me of a time that I was so drunk that I went into the men's room, didn't even think about it. And when I walked out, a guy passed me and I went, is it him or is it me? <laughs> Isn't that always the pen? And I went, oh no, it was me. I is, walked into the men, but no, nobody else was in there. Is it and live I, or is it Memorax? And I, got pass, and I was just like, oh shit, that could have been interesting. Like 30 more seconds as I'm washing up my hands. So <laughs> I'm about to fall over from drink. <laughs> It was great. Oh, I love it. <laughs> you crazy rebels, yo. I know, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. What is yours, Katie? Sorry. Um, <laughs> we totally we totally went on a bathroom tie right there for a second. Yeah. There we go. It has to be addressed. It has right. to be addressed. When a woman's got to go, she's got to go. The Absolutely. important issues of our day. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm on board with our amazing library yes. here. Yes. You're a founder, uh, girl. Uh, yes. You are. Uh, it. Of course. <laughs> and I would say the other area, because I tend to be kind of passive in my everyday life to some extent, I'm a little easygoing, yeah. would be um, medical issues. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, I yeah. feel like that's not a, um industry here in the United mm -hmm. States that is always in the best interest of the patient yeah very it's true very much a money maker. oh definitely yeah. so i'd have to say like my moments of rebellions have kind of like shined there i had uh, my son when he was just a couple weeks old mm -hmm. was having a medical problem and i took him to the hospital that specializes in children care yeah and they told me the exact opposite of what the hospital i had him in told me mm -hmm. and what i had researched which corresponded with that hospital yeah and i put my foot down and i was like no you're absolutely Good for not you. doing this and this is not See? happening and That's i do not true. agree to that yeah. to the point that they were like laughing about me in the hallways and i heard them talking about like this whole issue oh Oh, I was but, so pissed. But you're but like, good like, for you, mom. Right good for us. you. Yeah. yeah, mommy bear. Yep, mommy bear. Mm -hmm. Totally. Good yep. for you. Totally it kicks in. It, so yeah, I have to say the the, the whole doctor thing, TSA. I can 
find my hostile inner rebellion. See? Good I for like you. That. Yeah. <laughs> well, you also stuck yes. to your birthing plan. I mean, I did, I did yeah. not. And oh. then I was kind of like, whatever, birthing plan. Let's just go with the flow. I, also, I had my babies in a military hospital, so yeah, I knew yeah, I had yeah. no control. Yeah. But yeah. when I saw you really like have a birthing plan and stick to it, I'm like, damn it, Katie, that's brilliant. Aww, <laughs> I was really you. proud of you. Yeah. I'd already I had both my babies by then, but I was like, damn. I, <laughs> I didn't have a birthing plan because I was like, what the hell do I know about birthing babies? I know, but like <laughs> Katie did and re- she had a doula. She wow. was like on it. And I was like really, really I proud. remember my mom being yeah. like, why would you want to know about these things i'm like because i have to do it exactly yes. right so I need yes. to know what's gonna happen yes but, and i was yeah, I, I think loved i scared that. a few people because i went in to be induced on a thursday and i didn't have them till sunday oh yeah Ooh, I was like yeah, i will yeah. not back down exactly i was <laughs> proud i was not thank scared you. i was proud thank you thank you thank you <laughs> she knew what she wanted and she got it damn it against a medical system <laughs> All it's I knew was that yeah. no meds. Mad, I don't want any meds. No meds. <laughs> no. It is really hard to stand up for yourself in that it system. Is. It so, is. And I think um, especially because you really, feel crappy. Yeah, yeah you're already mm-hmm. like in a, a low spot. I think um, it's interesting how this kind of ties into my lady. Actually, Ooh, look at uh, that. Because my lady is Rosa Luxemburg. Sweet. Who I've she heard was, of, but know nothing yes, about. Yes. She was very much a socialist, a communist. Mm-hmm. Um, very much against like the capitalism. Gotcha. Okay. So Ooh. when we talk about that, like money making mm-hmm. medical system, she would be like, "Hell See? no!" Yeah. To nice. what's going on here in the United States right now? Exactly. Of course, she was born quite a bit of time ago, um, 1871 okay. in Poland. Oh, ah, okay. Which at that time was controlled by Russia, kind of like a. I don't know. Everybody, like, just took a piece of Poland, and they're like... Right. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Um, So she grew up as a um, Jewish woman in Mm -hmm. Poland. Gotcha. uh, Because of it being owned by Russia, or occupied by Russia. Right, exactly. Ruled Um, by at the time. Right. Right. I don't understand my pre-World War I history super great, so I don't understand my my Russian history that well, so I'm watching The Great on Hulu, and I still don't understand my Russian history. Huzzah! Yes. I sound like (laughs) I I need to get in on this. It's very interesting, but I'm also very confused, and it's not accurate. It's not historically accurate at all. Russia sound sexy, though? they're, like, very much way. Yes. It's not accurate. Based on a true story. Mostly true, a bit whatever. of a true story, but yes, yeah. go for it. Yes. Well, she yeah. identified first as a Polish woman. Okay, makes sense. Um, growing up, she had a very close knit family. Um, they were very like middle lower class, um, but interested in like her mom came from kind of a religious rabbi yeah. study, um, focus on books, very educational type family. Yeah. Um, so they truly, really supported her in becoming like kind of the rebellious educated young woman she became nice um she was in high school when she was already joining these um rebellions in poland that were (laughs) illegal Ooh. yes they were against the government as it stood right and definitely made her a target for like um political what do you want to call that it's not political prisoner because it's like mm-hmm. a step before that. Mm-hmm. Ideal political, yeah, person oh, of perfect. interest, <laughs> person, person of interest, interest. <laughs> right? Yes, yes, um, yes. But really, she did quite a bit of traveling and got her education in several different locations. I was really impressed when I read because we've been talking a lot at our house about foreign languages. Yeah, um, she spoke Polish, Russian. French and German. Oh, wow. Jeez. She knew four languages. Four languages. Wow. Yes, yeah, she's nice. an incredibly, incredibly smart woman. Um, so she was able, through the support of her family, to get this education and actually became the first Polish woman, actually the first woman in the entire world, who had a doctoral degree in economics. Oh, oh really? good girl. Which, come Look on. That. Let's just go yeah. ahead and address the fact that yeah. when you hear the words, the name Rosa Luxemburg, have you ever yeah. heard Dr. Rosa Luxemburg? No. Oh, I haven't. Oh, good point. Right? Wow. They don't even give her mm-hmm. her doctorate. Right. In and I, like in Germany, they're like rooting for her these days. There's some monuments and stuff oh. like that. And still, even in the YouTube videos I watch, nobody refers to her as Doc- Dr. Mm-hmm. Luxemburg. She and earned it. She that. earned it. She Damn. did. Damn. She did. Um, So throughout her education, she was really maintaining her um, influence and her action in these political 
uh, groups. Okay. All of them very leftist, very socialist groups. Yeah. Um, but she felt like the actual revolution would not happen in Poland, but it would happen in Germany. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So after she completed her doctorate, Germany, she knew was where she wanted to be. Gotcha. Oh. Okay. But this is also like before World War One. It is correct. before right. World War One. Yes. Correct. Right. And yes. it's before obviously World War Two as well. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yes, Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but this part kind of cracks me up. Her solution to getting herself to Germany, she married a dude. Yeah. Yeah. As yeah. you do. What, yeah. Well, the I mean, what, route in this. what were her options? <laughs> right. I mean, really. She wanted yeah. to stay that there was, for an extended period of time. She pulled time. her that woman card. Her. That, I mean, that, <laughs> was your, that was your pick. So she mm-hmm. married a family friend um, who could help her relocate to Germany. They never lived together. They divorced five years later. Right. Um, oh, so was a this marriage was just a marriage on paper. Oh, yeah. It was oh. 100% a green card marriage to get her into Germany gotcha. to join oh. this social movement. Mm. Wow. Go. Oh. In Germany. Sure. And that's her only marriage. Oh, look wow. at that. Wow. Mm. All her time. Um, I think the really cool thing that I would love to learn more about is that she was a very prolific letter writer. Oh, cool. Mm. So we definitely know she kind of had like some romantic affairs, um, a lot of really strong friendships with women within these parties. Nice. But if you hear about Rosa Luxemburg from kind of a feminist perspective, um, there you might hear of a little bit of conflict. Okay, gotcha. Because she was not active at the time in securing women's right to vote. Okay, gotcha. Um, other women's rights along those lines, um, or even like the the women pockets to the political group she was in. Okay, gotcha. And it was really because of a, a, a couple reasons. Mm-hmm. As far as like joining the groups within the groups that she was in, she yeah. didn't want to be sidelined. Yeah, mm-hmm. I can see that. She wanted to be at sure. the front of the party. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Being listened to, um, being influential. She was in leaning it. in. She yeah. was. She and was. And if she labeled herself and as she, yeah. the and she women's had party, great then. relationships with the women within that party. She really did. Yeah. Um, there's lots of correspondence between her and and the women there, but she didn't kind of like cleave her way over to that. It wasn't her wheelhouse. It wasn't yeah. her hill to die on. Basically, sometimes the only way to to get your your um, point across or to get your your thing going through is to join the opposition right and just make sure yeah. that they consider you friendly yeah. right yeah Absolutely. i mean it says a woman who started in business in the 80s <laughs> and change the minds yeah. as you exactly. go along you have yeah. to take a subtle approach right um the other factor which might be a little more com- um controversial and i mm-hmm. think is kind of being discussed now is that she felt like um women pushing for the right to vote and some of these rights were very much the bourgeoisie women they looking were the rich for women. rights for yeah. themselves and mm-hmm. not looking for rights for all women. This is very mm-hmm. true. Yeah, yeah. That's a that's a common criticism. So she mm-hmm. very much felt like women's rights would come with the people's rights. So right. when she got yeah, yeah, the yeah. working class poor organized and demanding their autonomy and their rights, then that would also equal women's rights. Yeah, Mm -hmm. exactly. Because if you think about it, even in this country, we have the 1920s uh, right to vote for women, but mm -hmm. we still need a 1964 Civil Rights Act for Mm -hmm. our Native American women and for our African American women. So, in other words, the 1920s was for the bourgeoisie. The the U.S. suffragettes decided that it was... It was just too steep of a hill to climb to try mm-hmm. to include the African American women. Right, which is unfortunate. Yes. Because we're stronger together. <laughs> right. But I can see that but argument. Again, very much they may so. have been yeah. reading the room. Right. Yeah, of how to get this passed. How, by to, any how means to beat necessary. back the patriarchy. Yeah. 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 They were worried about losing the South. Yeah. To not get yeah. passed at all. Right. Right. Which exactly. Is still, yeah, this is not a good place. It's to not be. noble. Yeah. yeah. It's Arkham's right. Razor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very much so. Well, one of the fa- famous quotes by Rosa is that women's freedom is the sign of social freedom. Oh, so if you I truly like had a free woman, then you would have free. You you would be socially free. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. All those roads. It's wonderful. Yeah. yeah I absolutely. like that. She's mm-hmm. she's a very. I mean, she really became the head of a lot of these committees just because of like her charm mm-hmm. and her ability Eloquence. to present things and to give yeah. speeches and to lead. Um, I think it said between like 1905 and 1906, she wrote or gave over 100 speeches. Oh, goodness. Wow. So she was extremely prolific, and she also became known as somebody that wouldn't compromise. Oh, look at that. Stern um, and her Because as like, you know, political things stirred and changed and evolved, 
um, a lot of the people that started this like leftist socialist movement with her kind of moved more towards the center and she never yeah. ever did. I think that's oh, the way of almost no. any political group is that they start way on one side or the other and, and then, then they, they kind of compromises yeah. and that uh-huh. kind of thing. Yes. Um, and I think one of the things that brought her to the forefront of the people that would kind of lead to her demise mm-hmm. um, was the start of World War One. Oh yeah, that, um, because that she was very much a pacifist. Yeah, um, she very much thought that World War One was absolute bullshit. It was mm-hmm. for many reasons, <laughs> and one is which, from her socialist perspective, is we are sending out people from the working classes, children. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. um, they're men. They're to young fight men, the rich man's to war, fight the, the rich man's war. Yes, mm-hmm. exactly. So she yeah. was extremely demonstrative in mm-hmm. protesting this war, which of course ended with her imprisonment. Oh, uh, okay. She was imprisoned about three years around that time. She'd already been imprisoned in the early 1900s for, for protests for and protests yeah. and organizing gotcha. of laborers makes sense um, <laughs> right? not her first rodeo no, 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 no. <laughs> the incredible thing is she had such a great support network and people so interested in getting her word out there that while she was in prison she was still writing for these newspapers and magazines that she had helped found to get the word oh, out because wow. back in the day if you had yeah. yourself a rebellion you got to get yourself a newspaper you got to get yourself mm-hmm. a newspaper <laughs> <laughs> you got to get a newspaper or, or flyers know, right? in, the, in the living room yeah, the, the power of the pamphlet <laughs> we, we were talking about earlier you got to yep. get that pamphlet out <laughs> so um, so she remained uh, during World War One a lot of that time period behind bars. Gotcha. So. But she had time to write. She had she time did. to write speeches and to write her uh, pamphlets and newspaper. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's incredible now they're they didn't realize how much her family supported her, but they're yeah. finding out now like how much they did to still get her information, her word out to support oh, nice. her to get her the things she needed while she was in prison. Give her her voice, oh. even though she's behind bars. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, and select people in the party because you know it, it really did become like she started with this group of people and it split off. And right, went to this group to start. You know, the more socialist and it split off. Yeah. Um. So then, shortly after World War One, um, she's really capitalizing. Poor choice of words. Right. <laughs> ah, but she's capitalizing really, on capitalism. She's really <laughs> banking on the fact that a lot of people in the working class have just seen all of their children be killed by a war. Yeah. They fought for um, for colonialism, for yeah. power, for money. And she's in Germany right. at the time, right? Yes. Germany's absolutely. bankrupt oh, yeah. at the end of World War I. And, they have and nothing. beaten down. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and very politically fractured at yeah. that time. Um, so she really saw this as a, a time to, like, make progress. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and her party did um, a bunch of, I don't know how to say, but, like, protests. Let's okay. just say protests. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But a lot of um, refusing to work, uh, blocking progress, yeah. stuff like that, kind of just making a little bit of trouble. Yeah. And, and uh, there's been reports that she felt like it wasn't well organized or well done, but, of course, supported yeah. the, the message and the meaning behind all of that. Yeah. Um, but as a result of that protest, um, she was actually captured with her second charge. I kind of forget his name, but once again, who dares? We're talking about her. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, you guys. They were actually both <laughs> captured by yeah. a military police. Yeah, okay. And they were interrogated and tortured, oh. and they were eventually murdered. Oh, my gosh. Um, and she was actually murdered and then thrown into a canal. Oh, my oh. God. Her body was. So wow. if you go to Germany, um, you can actually see a monument at the canal that says her name um, mm. whereabouts they think that she was thrown in. Oh my so gosh. She, I think she was about 54 okay. when she was executed. Gotcha. Mm. Um, so they were trying to make sure she was forgotten. Right. Almost Absolutely. in a sense. You know what I mean? If Absolutely. you just throw her in but a canal so, and be like, Dang. It's so interesting because a lot of what she talked about was economic, um, political yeah. economic and about equality of classes yeah but a lot of her words have been taken to a lot of revolutionary movements okay gotcha um, like there was that somebody don't that don't necessarily line right, up with what she's saying right. like right. there was somebody in the 70s and i'm sorry i forget who it was um that was talking about feminism and used her theory to talk about the objectifying of women's bodies okay. as a commodity okay mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. like she talked about the commodities of um you business know, the, yeah of oil business, or yeah mm-hmm. based yeah. on hers um and one of my favorite quotes I've read by her is that the most revolutionary thing one can do is to always proclaim loudly what is happening. Oh, nice. Mm. Oh, wow. That's Pay very profound. Know what's yeah. happening and pro- proclaim loudly. Right. That's my Speak f- your truth, basically. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And, and that's my absolute favorite. I would say her, in general, most 
famous quote is when she talks about how society has to either move towards socialism or go back to barbarianism. I said that so bad. I know what you're barbarism. saying. Yeah. Barbarism. Yeah. Barbarism. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Barbarism. And that's actually yeah. being pulled out of and dusted off right now when we talk about um, uh, climate change. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're okay. talking about the um, eco-socialism. Right. Like we either move to eco-socialism or uh-huh. soon we'll be in barbarism because we'll be fighting over the scarcity of the resources right. we have. Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So she's actually being like brought up again now because wow. of her political thinking. That's cool though. That so, is very cool. Totally a brilliant woman and fascinating. Yeah, uh-huh. exactly. Wow. Oh, it's a Luxembourg. Look it at that. that. That was interesting. <laughs> Sweet. Now I feel like I finally know more about her because I'll bet you I don't know so. how I thought of her and it, it yeah. might be quotes. It might be, you know, yeah, a, a, she has a lot because she was yeah. a very prolific writer. That's awesome. Very intelligent woman. See? In fact, it was hard to learn about her because I'm like, I don't know economic theory. Yeah, I, I know, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Sure. Yes. Sure. Yes. You know, and our culture is so entrenched in capitalism yeah, it's it really is. hard to imagine any other kind of system so knowing what right. she's thinking or what she's proposing i'm like i don't know yeah but it sounds yeah. nicer yes exactly <laughs> i like it i right? dig it revolution yes. and it sounds like um her work that she has established is still being processed and Absolutely. is still being like you know what i mean like incorporated Absolutely. of how can we um, how can we learn? learn? This? Yeah, Aww. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I, <laughs> not repeat this. <laughs> right. Maybe we can add it to the show notes. I always say this. I feel like I'm throwing you into the bus because then you oh, have I don't to mind. find it, but maybe I can find it. Um, in Germany, it seems like there's a great amount of tourist uh, opportunities to learn about her oh, as well. Okay. I believe they have like a archive. childhood home or something. Uh, yeah. That would be in Poland. But okay. Yeah. True, true, true. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Cause I she went I to school. Maybe yeah. they have that, but the video I watched on YouTube was about, um, Germany, and okay. I believe they have a center dedicated to her writings and her letters. Oh, nice! Um, like a little museum, a monument. Oh, cool! Beyond even where she was chucked in the river. Gotcha. There yeah. you go. Isn't that oh. sweet? Yeah. Well, you can pay your respects. <laughs> Very right? cool. Right. I yeah. will. I don't mind finding things for show notes. I think it's quite fun to do, actually, because then I can add some well, videos and you. links and all that kind yeah. of good stuff. There's lots of good things out there on YouTube. Yeah. To learn yeah. More about Not only her. that, we want to encourage people to go down yeah. the rabbit hole. Like if right. this particular episode or any episode episode really interests you and you want to learn more you go to galsguide.org and oh my gosh it's all there in one mm-hmm. nice right little you know bullet point sort of thing so mm-hmm. That's yeah amazing. we just don't know who you're going to obsess about <laughs> right exactly rosa is a fascinating woman i yeah. think she's thinking like at a higher level than i may be able to process but right. i will keep working on it and she also might be ahead of her time <laughs> Absolutely. You know what I, I mean? Think the fact so. that we're talking about her quotes now yeah. is yeah. proof of that. Yeah, very true. Yeah. Well, one of my mentors once told me, you know how you can tell a pioneer? They're the ones with the arrows in their back. I always love uh, that quote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. The the ones who were misunderstood and abused and they killed. Were, they were running so far ahead. Yeah. And, and did anybody have their back? No, no, exactly. Because <laughs> they didn't quite understand what they were doing either. Right, exactly. They didn't quite understand what was going on. Yep. I think that's very true when it comes to Rosa. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Yeah. Fascinating. Well, do you want to yes, wrap us I up, do. darling? Well, that wraps it up for us this week. Join us next week for another cool woman of history as Gal's Guide podcast continues. Thank you for listening. For show notes, links, and images from this week's show, visit galsguide.org. Want exclusive stuff like deleted bits and major bloopers? Become a Gals Guide patron today. Thanks for listening.